Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, like fire. A terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. There's always lots to talk about on The Advocate. We don't like to keep you in suspense. Welcome to The Advocate. I'll be kicking things off by challenging. Is our criticism without united action not condemning us to waiting for a change that will never come? Chuka, not one to douse the flames, stokes things up further by stating that honor is only as valuable as the people to whom it's given. With the festive season approaching, Liboris is addressing a matter close to our hearts, or is it our stomachs? Actually, he's talking about rice. Ekene has titled her advocacy, Power to the People, and she isn't speaking metaphorically either. It seems like we can't get enough of rice on this edition. Bolahan is also talking about rice, although his menu is garnished differently. You'll have to wait and see. Tick tock, it's time to set things in motion after the break. Could this not be termed using God's name in vain? Nigeria, a nation waiting on God. That is my topic this week. Last week, the Supreme Court dismissed the case brought by the PDP's Atiku Abubakar, challenging the legitimacy of Buhari's re-election. Shortly after, Atiku announced that he had fought a good fight on our behalf, which was soon followed by a comment by the PDP chairman, Uche Secondus, only God can bail out Nigeria. When people risk everything to fight for us, we are an ungrateful lot, washing our hands clean of any negative consequences that may arise. Some of us even go as far as to discredit their character, insisting that they are fighting for their own selfish reasons. I distinctly remember when the PDP said they would fight till the end to get justice. There were many discouraging voices, all saying what a waste of time and money it was and that they should just accept the results and move on. When Shorere decided to take on the fight, those voices could be heard again. And once he got detained by the DSS, the voices went one further to condemn his selfless action as a foolish one due to the use of the word revolution. What happened to the Nigeria we had under good luck, Jonathan? The Nigeria that was ready to occupy and protest at the drop of a hat. It would appear that we are now a nation resigned to its fate, waiting on God to save us. Too occupied with our own personal struggles to care about our collective struggles, we fail to realize that we, if we don't unite as a people to fight for our rights, we will be waiting on God indefinitely. All over the world, people are standing up to their governments and getting results. Just look at France and the Yellow Jackets and the Hong Kong protesters to mention a couple. It is vital we understand that if we truly want change, then as we wait on God, we also have a role to play. We need to come together as a people and stand up for our rights while supporting those who have risked everything for us on our behalf. And that's my advocacy. <laughs> I, I, I see your advocacy as a hydra-headed one. Okay. Uh, one, yes, there's need for us to come together. But on, I, I slightly disagree also on the other end because um, I, as, um, I, for one, I didn't see things from the article's point of view. Yeah. I, 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 for me, I didn't think there was need. I was actually directing some of that advocacy to you because oh, remember, really? you were, <laughs> yes, he was one of the people that said our yes. PDP should not forget do it. it, forget it, accept the because results. Because there are some battles you fight. There are some you, you look at the battle from the beginning to the end and you say, you it's know, even if it. I fight to the end, 
it's not worth it because the result will be the same. And, and, and so, the same thing, that's why even under Gulag Jonathan, we're never united. Mm -hmm. Some of us all came out to occupy. There were people who were benefiting at that time who felt there was no need, he was dead on arrival. You know, so, but for me, I, I, I quite agree with you, there's need for more synergy, uh, more unity of purpose. But uh, what we have now, quite unfortunately, is the fact that, you know, people, even those that are suffering the most, would rather create excuses for mm. their suffering. Yes, I like the fact so, that you use the word excuse, because a lot of times what I perceive is that people are overwhelmed. So they're overwhelmed, they feel like they can't do anything. So they resort to waiting for God, mm. excuse, mm. you know. But even if you, you look at it from a religious perspective, what is in your hand, you know? There's always something you can do. Like I met someone yesterday talking about sports. We're looking at national stadium. The state of the national stadium is so sad, oh, you know, to think God. that like, we learned to swim there in mm. the early days. Way back. What, what a place it was. And yet now all manner of things is being used for car maintenance, anything, you name it. Mm. It's abandoned. Money is being allocated to maintain the national stadium, but it's being siphoned. Mm -hmm. So the person working there is overwhelmed and he's like, you know, the usual complaints. And at the end, it's almost like you want to give up on Nigeria. But I said to him, that thing, that role you're playing, play it as diligently as you can. Don't abandon ship. What is in your hand? So we always feel overwhelmed. And so instead of the one you can do, you start blaming you start, you know, you start complaining and then you start coming up with excuses and critiquing people. Like, I didn't necessarily, I wouldn't have voted for Atiku, but I like the fact that he stood up to challenge, even if he couldn't win. Mm. I felt it was an expression of our frustration mm. that we're not happy. So don't, because if, if no one complains, if no one does anything, they'll take it that, you know, even now they're arrogantly saying, oh, we voted him in, mm. as though it's the will of the people. Yes, yes. So let us at least say it's not the complete will of the people. Mm. Let the, it's an expensive way of saying it, but let's still say it. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm coming no, from. Oh, so, and I, I definitely I, I, agree I, I, with I, I, you. We need to come together. That's the only way to largely to Obviously. Give it for God. You know, we, mm. we outsource. Because they make Maybe money. abdication yeah, is even money. the right word. We abdicate our responsibilities to God. To God. Mm. He doesn't take those things. <laughs> because he's, his hands are full and he has bigger <laughs> fishes to fry. So we need to move away from trying to put everything on God. And do the bit we can. I like the, the, the piece you said about, um, uh, you know, like doing whatever, whatever is within mm. our capacity to do. Mm. If you think about that copper that was making yes. chairs and chairs. tables, yes. mm. yeah, yeah. that is what his hands has found to do. Yeah. And he did it very well. Somebody would take a chair. Social Sunny so mm -hmm. saw his school without a library and tweeted about it instead. Oh, I saw the blast he received. Yeah, man. That you saw his school without yeah, library, yeah, you, went, you went to tweet. No, but there was a couple who saw his school without chairs and started making chairs and tables. Yeah, yeah. So there must be a way each of us can contribute mm. in our own little circles of uh, influence. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I believe that uh, liberals, you know, even if you look at the process from beginning to end and you yeah. think you're not going to get the result mm. you want, the truth is that the process itself is very important. Yes. It is. If we have 35 revolutions a year, it will register in people's minds that 35 times people got up to try to fight. I'm not talking about revolution. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, you no, better no, not talk no, about revolution. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. That's what I'm serious because that's the word. I mean, no, but I'm interested. You know, yeah. and so you get people start to see mm. that there are people that, mm. are, that want happy. to fight for them. Mm. There are people who are not happy, yeah. people who are angry. And, you know, you will find that after, you know, after a while it builds up and then that unity you're looking for, it will start you to come form. come together. Mm. Yes. As we speak now, yeah. if you have a matter at the Supreme Court, mm. the earliest date you can get is 2023. Mm. Do you know why? We have a lot of frivolous cases. Mm. All over the whole place. Even my matters at the Court of Appeal, mm. the earliest date you get, you get 2021, <laughs> November wow. 2022, because of frivolous matters. Mm. There are an election petition in Nigeria, there are procedures. If you prove, if you allege election irregularities, you must prove pulling unit by pulling unit. You have six months to do that. And you look at the, the scientific rigging, our election laws have not been updated to take cognizance of those scientific reading. So when you look at the process, it's dead on arrival. How do you prove pulling unit by pulling unit in 36 states of the federation? So how do we change that process? And, and so what you should, the target should be on the electoral laws at the National Assembly. Mm. Try as much as you can from your political party to ensure that you have more voices in these places. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you go to court, lawyers are going to charge. So you. Let fighting let me, the wrong let battles, let quote, then. That's what I'm saying. We're fighting that's the wrong battles. Yeah, but let me even quote somebody that I spoke to recently that said, look, that of course, these other candidates who stood forward, 
never stood a chance of winning. Mm, but mm. you have to make a start. Yes. You yeah, can't yeah, not no, make... No, even the fact that it's dead on arrival doesn't still mean you won't register For your the presence. fact that you have... Um, you had two dominant party and 90-something French parties. <laughs> Those 92 other French parties, if they had stood behind the major opposition party, so let's put our strength together. Yeah, again, the which is the point. It's exactly the point. Do yeah. some yeah. scratch the and so, which is why, you know, later also I talk about comparative advantage. Mm. If you know this is where I have strength, mm -hmm. you concentrate on the areas you have strength. Instead of, yeah. instead of fighting all Okay, but Libras, let me even ask you, France. the horse has bolted. Mm -hmm. We had an election, we saw the rigging, we're dissatisfied. What do we do? Let me tell you. We, we let it go and start scientific, regrouping? Scientific rigging. When, because you know that the, it's about numbers, so what do you do? I know this is your stronghold. I ensure that voting materials don't get there early. And so I disenfranchise your people. So when you get to court, you say, oh, my people, we are not allowed to vote. What's the guarantee that if they voted, they would have, they would have voted, voted for, for you? you. Correct. And that, so, and so what you now do, and then you say, well, there were minor irregularities, and say the court says it's what is substantial enough. Mm. But what, because what the law talk about is substantial The of proof. Yeah, and then, so what you mm. now do is, let's look at the law, and then just oppose it with the processes of the election, what are the areas we need to check? All of these non-arrival of materials, and so if materials do Let's not make it arrive, electronic and forget all exactly. this. Exactly. So mm. when you address all of these problems, mm. you would have solved fifty percent mm -hmm. of no, but, uh, but, 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 but you know, you know, but, the sad thing for me now is that. It doesn't seem as if we are approaching this with the right level of uh, seriousness. Yes. No, we are not. No, we are not because, because they don't want. Yeah. The way it is going. Our electoral law amended will arrive on the eve of the next election. Oh my. If we're yes, not careful. Yes, that's and it may not even get um, uh, amended. And there are either. serious issues that we need to deal with. On governed spaces, if you're going to do electronic voting, mm -hmm. whatever measure you need to do, we need to be able to put it in place well before so the So how does this which is united we stand? That, that yeah, is that's, that's help us the, the towards the united next 2023. We stand, the united we stand is first and foremost you need to identify the problem we want to stand for. Yes. Once we identify this is the problem and if we confront this problem headlong would have solved the problem you know 60 percent or 80 percent and that's why i wanted people to look at places like hong kong because they are under communism you know that that is the rule that's going over there and they knew they couldn't do anything they even have cameras like in china for instance they have cameras watching them as you're walking down the street there's a camera on you so that any little thing you do they take points off you can you imagine that? So if you want to travel, they can say you won't travel because you did this, you did this, you did that. So if they know that their power is in their share number and they're trooping out every single day yeah. in order to make this happen, why are we, once we do it one day, that's it. Nigerians, are, we've, we've we protested, we're done. At, at, at when, Hong <laughs> you Kong, I'm not sure that Hong Kong is a very rich society. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah, but compared to here, it's yeah. easier. How many days can people protest in Lagos before they will tell you you can't feed their family? Yeah. No, because we need to start it from our churches. Yeah. We are a very religious <laughs> no, that's country. Fine, fine. Let's go yeah. Yeah. Imagine the way we troop out to Holy Ghost Congress. Yeah. If we all troop out one day, just one day to say, Lagos is about expressway, no going yes. out, no coming in mm. until the roads are fixed. That would make a difference, for real. It really would. Okay, well, there we go. We never have enough time to discuss these things. When pretense is pulled away, we are left with owning up to our shortcomings. Chuka further strips away our cover-up after the break. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a terrible, a terrible, <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Has it really been a couple of weeks? <laughs> it's good to be back. I want to talk about diminished accolades. It was very recently the birthday anniversary of the late Stella Adadevo, the Nigerian doctor who, by virtue of her action, averted the spread of Ebola at a critical time when it had not become such a scourge in neighboring countries. 
Every year at this time, many Nigerians call for her to be accorded a national award. I am one of such, but I only did so shortly after she died. But has she still been honored? Has she still not been honored? Why? Because she has been valiant, courageous, brave, and all without godfatherism. In our nation, awards go to those who make publicity out of acts that are ultimately self-serving. They are usually friends of government. Many are society butterflies who see awards as another feather to the cap, like chieftaincy titles. That a president is automatically given our highest national award is a complete farce. The award should be given for positive impact in society. An average performing president should be given a lower cadre award, if any, at all. This is why I consider these awards as having been reduced in value. They are essentially for sale and do not lift one's perception of the awardee. All things being ideal, a daredevil ought to receive a very senior award. She would become a serious role model for aspiring doctors and all other young ones. There could be a way that these awards are more democratically awarded in a nation beset by corruption in all areas. This is a tall order. The obvious action should be to scrap them entirely. Honestly, I'm at that point where I think we to should scrap, scrap the them completely. I'm but obviously speaking. it's not No, but I know it's not going to happen. Mm. But my major problem with the way we do things in Nigeria, for instance, <laughs> I know my, my mom won't be too happy, but I'm going to bring it up. Mm. Every single month or thereabouts, some church or another is giving her patronage, one award, one this. And, you know, I know it's not because, oh, they think one is so godly or one is so whatever. I think they know that it's the money, money. that they're going to receive from, this, from giving out these awards. These things really annoy me because they're pointless. There's several people that get these doctorates yeah, yeah. every single day. Meanwhile, you know that they do not get it the legitimate way. They've gone and paid someone just so that they can look the part. So in my opinion, if you have not done something worthy of that award, stop diminishing the value of these awards by yeah. giving them out. It is yeah. wrong. Now, a woman like uh, Adad Adadevo that you mentioned, why till today? Why can't we just give her this award? Yeah. You know, I don't understand why we've been holding back. It's not from for want of people campaigning about it. Yes. it uh, why should anybody even have to campaign she about was, it? Was given an award. Yeah, one Which small one, one that was no, hardly national, publicized. National. I saw Which it one? now. Yeah, she was given a national honor, and uh, that is song. Oh, yes, that the one. Yeah, I saw that. What, but it wasn't what, even what really value publicized. was that? One. It's the same award that you're talking about, the National Honors. No, yeah, one but, very but cheap they, award. It, it was very quiet. It was a very <laughs> cheap award. No, no yeah. exactly. Yeah. It was one of those. Yeah, and yeah, it was very quiet. I didn't even, she, yeah. she, exactly. You didn't even hear yeah, about yeah. it. How does uh, scrapping awards, yes. uh, how will it Solve help the problem. the situation? No, no what, what it is is you're I don't know. teaching young people now um, that awards can be bought. You're teaching them that if you don't buy your award, mm. you might be a nobody. That means you buy being somebody, mm. but you don't, not mm. normally. You would be somebody, mm -hmm. and then you would get an award. So don't teach them that after a while you can just so assume. So much, so much it is a process that we need to reform. Absolutely. To make it valuable as, as yeah. supposed yeah. to be. said democratic. Uh, that's, yeah. that's why I said I there, there know, could be a way. I didn't know, let me use that word, I didn't know <laughs> Obama was a professor of law uh, until he Exited of his. Oh, for uh, real? No, I, I want to say I didn't know. Let me just. <laughs> even though I know. Or, or he Brown, wasn't or, brandishing or, it. He wasn't brandishing. Yes. Professor, Gordon Brown. President. Uh, Allergy doctor, chief doctor. Allergy yeah. chief doctor. Yeah. You know, here. Libros. Are, Gordon Brown is a PhD holder. Yeah, yeah but you doctor. wouldn't even know. Prime about Minister. That. Yeah. You hear he was you, Mr. Gordon Brown, and that's what hear, it was until he left, and then yeah, everybody pastor, said. Pastor, okay. doctor. Yeah. This, 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 that. They want to put PhD. Yeah. You know, so it's the same thing, MN, MNS, mm -hmm. DSS, uh, And so it stops having any meaning. You know, so, and just recently, the governor of Lagos said, stop oh, calling yes. me His Excellency. I was yes. going to bring that up now. Governor. I was very happy. Yes. So, it, exactly. So, here, we, we like the accolades like that titles. come with these titles and awards. And at the end of the day, it diminishes whatever you know, um, intentions for giving those awards. And then when you now also give it to people that ordinarily Don't do not deserve it. Mm. Society where there are no mentorship. 
and and so people who deserve to be given award would beg for it mm. to get recognized. Have to and and so when you do that, what you are telling the young ones is that look, you really don't need to work hard yeah. to be recognized. Just Those make money. Days, in the villages, once you are given a chief's tensi title, it means yes. that you deserve you it. You really deserve something. it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But these days, you can just go and they look for mm. one name. Ori uh, Hedima. Of, Somebody of who enjoys good things. Uh, yes. Ori <laughs> 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 can they give it to you. And that's it. No, but that's but actually, I like, I like the point which I made that, you know, the because what I look at, what I'm looking at is a social revolution. Mm. So this one we can't just drop with government and sit back. Be because we're the ones. We're the, no, it, it can't be helped. I'm coming now, I'm coming now, because this one lands on all our doorsteps. Mm. So from your mom who is saying that she mm. will go and collect, even though she herself may not have instigated it. Mm. You have to, somebody has to stand up and say, sorry, I won't accept this. Mm. Because it doesn't connect. Because someone told me a story. I mean, the guy who did the film, um, Daughters of Chibok, he's trying to raise money for the Chibok Society. And not much is coming. They've been abandoned. Do but he said he was present people. when the VP said, look, I, all you people who want to be putting big posters for my birthday, don't put big posters. Rather, I, I'm setting up a school in Medjugorje. Do you know on the spots, they raise billions. Mm. One person raised mm. the bulk of that because they link the award or whatever to what they can get from yes, the current right. favor. Mm. So yeah. we need to start you know, saying, no, 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 no. We're not interested in yeah. all of this. We need to, we ourselves, it starts with we us. need to challenge yes. these things openly. And when the person comes that you know is not worthy, don't double for don't, them. Don't, don't, don't. Just stand with your head don't straight. Them Let them yeah. get the message that you bought this thing, but you haven't bought mm -hmm. my recognition. Yeah, yeah, that's right. A witness is in the witness box, and you say, so, Mr. I said, oh, please. I'm not Mr. I'm not Mr. I'm doctor. I deserve it. Call me doctor. <laughs> <laughs> we had a governor who called himself pharmacist. You see this, you see this stuff? Yes. There was a governor in this country who is a pharmacist. And I don't know that. Yeah. Don't, don't, yeah. You see, don't you see? Uh, Farm builder. Uh, my, wife, my wife, her excellency, my wife, the first okay, lady. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was doing an invitation oh, no. list the oh, other no. day, and I realized how difficult this list was going to be because mm. we really needed to get everybody's up-to-date title. Mm. And, then up -up across, title. <laughs> yes. Yes. and then I came across an ex-senator who didn't quite make it into the... and But he still wants to answer honorable. So uh, it yes. was... Yes, Hon forever. Chief Honorable Doctor. And, and I looked at that and I wish. said, are we really going to put all this down? Yes. And I was told, yes, <laughs> you have to put all of this down. So yeah. it really goes to show how important yeah. titles are to some people. But you, you, you sorry, don't mean uh, anything. To round up on this. Uh, uh, also, I'm not even ready to round up yet. Uh, okay, sorry. I have another thing I'm to say. Another thing. <laughs> Take the legal profession, for example. Mm -hmm. When you get to court, you see that man with silk sits in front. You know, there's these um, threats. You're frightened as a junior lawyer, but if all of you, all of you wear suits mm. and you sit down, you don't know who is a senior advocate. Mm. Or those, it puts you on the same pedestal. Okay, okay. It is the same yeah, thing with all of yeah. these titles. Mm. And, so when you take away all of those titles, then yeah. they're naked. Yes, it becomes easy to assess you know, government, oh. it becomes easy also to relate with people yeah. who think they are up. Yeah, because I think... But they, they won't. They, I think they won't before, do that because it's part of the deal. That's Correct. the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Even I, the car people bring to court. I, I, I knew a former senior advocate who used to go with a Rolls Royce to Come the saw part of the impression. Yes, it, yeah, to, to, to intimidate. <laughs> yes. But I, I would say, you know, and I, I believe I'm not the only one, I would trace the downfall of Nigeria to when we ditched meritocracy. Because a lot of people yeah. from we the old military. regime, military. the old regime said, look, when they were in schools that you knew if you got into the school, you get, mm. you know, you get a, what do you call this thing? When you get a scholarship. scholarship. Yeah. And you knew you merited it. The way you drove you to work. That's why I love sports till tomorrow, no matter how terrible everything gets. Sports, you can't fake it hardly. You know, you're out there, you perform, you get the, you get the accolades, okay. yeah. And that's why people are driven in sports. That's why people still throng sports halls. You know, okay, there are ways of trying no, to yeah. cheat. Yeah, ways of, yeah. But, you know, so, and now politics has been taken advantage of. We need to get back to a merit-based society. society. And these awards are a key way of doing that. Mm. Mm. Ah, well. Okay, well, now my matter has been addressed. <laughs> it's uh, with a sense of urgency that I'll be handing over the baton to liberals to tackle the relatively significant issue of rice after the break. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Yeah. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is oh, really disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a very, like fire. very <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and 
quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. When you speak of national dishes, if rice is it on the menu, then you haven't started. So what rice got to do with it? The word they say has become a global village, hence the reason countries are creating blocks for synergy, even when they are separating. Anyway, don't mind Britain that want to exit, yet they want a concession. That's a discussion for another day. Just recently, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria announced that if we close our borders for a year, we can achieve rice sufficiency. I hear you say, hmm. We are weekly inundated with reports in the news of rice, Nigerian customs, killings, and deaths. Yet, none of this trigger-happy custom officer is facing trial over summary execution of a fellow Nigerian over rice. The raid on car shops and hotels is a topic for another day. A minor Google search will reveal more to you. If you think we are losing only humans over rice, then wait for this. September 2019, CBN governor announced that the government has given out the sum of 146 billion naira as loan to rice farmers under its Anchor Boras program. Yet, not a single cover of this loan had been repaid. And our total budget for education and health this year is 132 billion naira. And you are still wondering why literacy is on the increase in Nigeria? It is because in Nigeria, rice is more important than health and education. We lose humans, money, and yet the rice is unavailable. As 50 kg of foreign rice previously sold at 13,000 naira is now being sold for up to 27,000 naira. That's 107 percent hike. Why the local variant, according to a report by BBC, has risen to 100% increase? No wonder people will go risk their lives to buy it across border at 5,000 naira to come sell it at 27,000 naira, similar to drug pushing, you would say. Of all the funds spent on rice since 1960, including Operation Feed the Nation, if you remember, we have little or nothing to show for it. Reasons are not far-fetched. Our soil is not the best for growing rice as Nigeria According to the Indes Mundi, a global data portal is not among the top 70 countries in terms of rice yield per hectare. China has a yield of 6.5 metric tons per hectare of rice. Brazil has 6.1. Vietnam has 5.41. South Korea, 5.3. A recent report by KPMG Advisory Services put Nigeria at 1.8, while other reports put it at 1.1. Then one, one wonders why the fixation on rice, when we could easily be the largest producer or exporter of so many other crops. According to an article by Tosin at DOT, after Indian and China, Nigeria is the largest producer of sesame seeds in the world. Nigeria is the sixth largest producer of cashew nuts in the world. In fact, Obomosho cashew is said to be the best in the world. Nigeria is the largest producer of cassava in the world. Nigeria is the fourth largest producer of edible aroid in the world. Nigeria is just the largest producer of, not just the largest producer of yam in the world, 70% of all the yams in the world are grown in Nigeria. Nigeria is the third largest producer of millet in the world. Nigeria is the third largest producer of sugar in the world. We are the largest producer of shea butter in the world, and not to mention palm produce, cocoa, rubber, and granite. The list is endless. With our grain population and a government lack of interest in education, is a practical impossibility to produce everything we eat. I would therefore advocate that we rather invest more in equipment, research and development in crops like the one listed above, where we have comparative advantage. And the gains therein can be used to cushion the shortfall in our rice production, rather than this unnecessary fixation on rice. Yeah, yeah. It's a delusional fixation. Because we're not going to get there. Thank you for the one point something hectare yield per yes. hectare yield. Because mm -hmm. that's the truth. Um, we're wasting our time on rice. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why every time I hear rice, I'm actually very angry. Okay. Um, it's time for us to stop talking about rice. But, but, we can uh, buy rice anywhere we like. Even me, I'm going to buy the one I like wherever I see it. <laughs> Rebel. And, um, what we should be doing is pushing those <laughs> other things. Absolutely. And even those other things, we have to check what the world wants. Mm. We might be third largest in sorghum. Sorghum might not be wanted much. Mm. If it is not wanted much, don't place too much emphasis on it. We're fond of doing this. We're fond of talking about Nigeria and say, oh, remember the ground, not pyramids. Yes, remember I the cocoa in the West. Mm. 
We're just deceiving ourselves. If there's no more cocoa, school. let's move on. Mm. <laughs> if, if, if they've killed all the trees, <laughs> and then let's move on. Um, if palm produce is not doing well anymore, and to but, turn it around, but, but, but funny enough, yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, but those, of those products yeah, are but I you know? to ask, but, but but why? If, if, it, if there is such a fixation, yeah. you know, because you make it sound like it's a conspiracy. Mm. It is why a conspiracy. is it? And, and I want to link to what you said. I, there I, is a demand for rice, apart from corn. Rice is the largest millet produce that Correct. is demanded in the world. Mm. So yes. yes, there is. And when you talk of, um, and I'm probably stealing his thunder on this one because like, mm. we chatted about this. When you talk of research and development, you know, Bolaho gave me to understand that the reason China are where they are is not that their soil was automatically, you know, so fertile. They did something to it. They mm -hmm. did, did some work on it. So the fact that we're at where we are, 1.6, whatever, doesn't mean we can't improve no, our that's, that's, that's the that's point he made, yeah. that yeah. if you invest in research, really? so, yeah, then you get money you it from the other produce. Yeah. Otherwise, I like it. Then you can yeah. lift yeah. rice. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, I like problem, point. actually, but I don't in, buy the in conspiracy my opinion, theory, right? is that we right. have not been paying attention to research and development. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Agriculture has moved beyond my soil is this, this is how much. Otherwise, countries like Israel will not even touch agriculture mm. at all. Mm. Exactly. They don't have water. They don't have land. But they are a great agricultural uh, um, economy. Uh, that is water. because it's technology. It is today. Egypt probably has the highest yield in the world of rice. Eight point two, mm. higher than China, higher than Brazil. It is research. Mm. It, it, it is. It let is. me let me surprise you with cassava that we produce. Mm. We have Africa has the lowest yield in cassava across the world. Asia has a higher yield. Latin America and the Caribbean have a higher yield. They have a higher yield. So, so when even in Nigeria, it's because no. everybody at their backyard have cassava. Yeah, what you're we saying is that we're we must not even produce looking it, at the research the yield. of cassava in itself. Yes. Yeah. Mm, yes. So we're not quite there in the yield of cassava. Correct. Okay. Today, there are other systemic issues, which is cost. Our cost of producing a metric ton of cassava today in Nigeria is about three times Thailand. Mm. We're not efficient. Yeah. We're not efficient. So there are systemic issues that is not affecting just only rice. But I'm proud of our the end. Okay, I want to come in here though. Like for instance, you know, we, we mentioned whether producer third this, first mm, this, whatever. Right? It's just the same problem we have with our oil, our crude. If you can't refine your product and package it in a way that others that you can That's export it. it. Yeah. For instance, we try to export yam to the and UK. They returned, and they returned it, they rejected it, it but they accepted, Ghana, they accepted <laughs> Ghana yam. So we need to understand that it's not being, the producing is not even really where the so money is at. Yeah. It is when refining it and making it um, pa yeah, for, for ready Adding for value. exporting. That's yeah. how you add value to it. So that, we're just wasting time being the third this, third that, yeah. third. If at the end of the day we cannot package That's, it in such uh, a way that people are going to want it. I want to take a little from Kenya and then from Ebolaho. When you close your borders and you say you want to be like China. Are you doing what China did? Exactly. No. That's Imagine bullshit. they said you just China closed borders, their borders for 40 years. Every day you hear, <laughs> you hear people are killing or people are dying because they smuggled rice. You make it expensive so people naturally will gravitate. Mm. China did not close their border and allow their presidents to go to America or and London for, for, for medical <laughs> treatment. Mm. They didn't close their borders and still allow generators to co come in. Mm. So they also reduced cost of production yeah. and then cost of importing through their sea, sea ports. Are we doing all of that? No, we're not. All of that? Mm. And so we think, and then are we researching? on a yield per, per, per uh, hectare. No, no we're not doing all of that. You give farmers money, some even married more wives. <laughs> and, and, and so, yes. when you are fixated on this rice, and then there are some other crops that you don't even research on. Naturally, like these are Like Acha, these are I heard about Acha. Acha. Yeah. You yes. know, the other day, apparently yeah. it's so highly nutritious and it's even better and it makes a mean job. <laughs> it's like a kind of grain. I didn't so, even know about it. Now, yeah. if we would research, apparently it's grown in Kaduna or somewhere like that. Right, Kaduna yes. Or uh, uh, so really, yeah, somebody... these are the things. We have it. Why don't we research it? And, and, and so to that thing from to... Bolaho, when you talk about um, the rice yield and then research and you know, um, that the fact that we are not, um, we need to look inward. If you can look inward and then processes, Cote d'Ivoire makes about $2.3 billion from sale of cocoa. But Switzerland, that refines co cocoa mm -hmm. to, to chocolate, Come makes on. about seven point something Correct. billion yeah. dollars from the same the cocoa same that product. they get from, from Switzerland. Right. So farming, if you like, diversify into farming, but without a commensurate diversification in into education, yeah. 
you are going to remain the poverty capital Correct. of the no, world. Thank you for that. That was a very useful yeah. idea. Well, well, time to take a break from our rice discussion <laughs> to hear from you on other matters. Concerning Operation Positive ID, Princess says, why is it only during election that they rely on re-catchment of people? It can also be used for loan for everyone as it is done abroad. I agree with you. Also concerning Operation Positive ID, yeah. West Kess says Operation, your identification is a nice idea in your country, hashtag Nigeria. Since Nigerian immigration has failed us, if possible, I'm in support of that. Let the Nigerian army carry on the movement of hashtag Operation, hashtag identification. It's easy to say so since you are over there. Yeah, <laughs> on a previous advocacy title, For Whom the Bell Tolls, Decadence in Education, but them at the says, China doesn't care how bad your English is. They teach vocation and they are winning. Who cares if you study in English? The colonial masters will ask you to write I-E-L-T-S anyway. Uh, anyway, the colonial master will ask you, yes, 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 I agree. Keep your comment coming in on our social media platform on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, Go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channels, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Ekene raises her hope when she reclaim, exclaim, power to the people. I can't wait to hear. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, right. a terrible, <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. You are watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Surely, demand and supply go hand in hand, innit? Power to the people, putting your naira where your needs are. I listened recently with engaged interest as a close family member narrated how they were now receiving so much light supply in their area, they live in Ikeja by the way, that they were tempted to say, it's a no fool. They gave this testimony after I commented on how serene it was at theirs upon a visit. It was striking that there was light and wonder of wonders, the familiar drone of generator noises as if in competition was remarkably absent. It almost felt like something was missing. Like a blind person who suddenly found his or her eyes opened unabated. This is according to one statement by a resident of Magudu in response to the 24-hour power supply that was their surreal experience starting August this year and documented in a Vanguard newspaper article titled Uninterrupted Power Supply, We Follow Due Process. Another resident who had lived in Magudu for 22 years said that this was undoubtedly the best thing that had happened to Magudu. Next level tins of a truth and do you blame them? If I hadn't experienced it myself, I would have struggled to believe it too. Apparently, Maryland, Ikeja, were the next stage of this rollout. On the face of it, it makes perfect sense. Charge a higher tariff for electricity supply from 20 naira per kilowatt hour to 47 naira, but deliver and everyone smiles, except perhaps the generator suppliers et al. After all, the difference is indeed clear when you balance the books. Peace of mind, no deafening generator sounds, and possibly more money in the bank when you deduct the cost of diesel and generator repairs as against the higher upfront electricity bill. I know what I would choose. Bottom line, Nigerians are happy to pay for improved service and a better quality of life. Just deliver. Can I get a witness? Yeah. <laughs> but, and this is a very big but, what of the less affluent areas that can't afford electricity at a higher tariff? This is where ordinarily it would make business sense to do a Robin Hood, as I call it. Take from the gains garnered from the more affluent areas and plow it into the poorer areas by way of structural development and subsidized costs of power for these areas. However, the reality may well diverge from the ordinary in that we may see oversubscription and underinvestment, as seems to be the case with our GSM networks. 
which would result in a drop in standards of supply while still charging the higher tariff, of course, which is why we must hold them accountable in this boom period through NGOs such as Serap and other consumer watchdogs, including the media, we can ensure that the attractive prospect of power to the people doesn't end up leaving us all in the dark. The, my only area, only area is um, this taken from the rich in terms of power. <laughs> in the Robin Hood. It's like a tax of sorts. Not really, because here we waste electricity a lot. We waste uh, electricity. Certainly. So if you know that it's expensive, we all have generators, even in amongst the poor. But if you know that it's expensive, you won't leave the light on. If you bought 200 naira worth of electricity, precisely, you manage it mm. yeah. so you don't just waste it. Yeah. And that, so that man that has air conditions running, running yeah. in all the rooms, he's definitely paying more. Mm. Yeah. And, and so, but the other man that just has a bulb in his or her room and one fan. You know, we put on the fan when he's not using it mm. because he wants also to manage. Should I qualify? Uh, what I'm looking at take from which is more about structural development because the people in, let's say, Ajigunli may not be able to afford 47 naira kilowatt tariff, but, but, but you can still charge them 20, so you subsidize no, the cost. They have, they have, they pay less, what they can afford. But they have less consumption at the same time. Yeah. In this area. Exactly. And sometimes, sometimes in the whole streets in Ajigunli, you might find that that the consumption in the entire street is far less than the consumption in one house mm -hmm. in Lekki. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it, oh, so you're making is. my point now. The no, rich so what are they're more, saying is right. that there's no reason. What he's saying is there's no reason to reduce their tariff because, the tariff because their consumption doesn't equate with yes. with like in what, my office. Yeah, I what run seven air conditions, spending. Mm. and I'm so. But the man, the small barber's shop, you know, in Ajegule, we have just one fan. Mm. And mm. okay, okay, let me. I understand what you're saying. Someone said, please go ahead. Let me. You see, the the capacity to pay is also important to structure it into the tariff in itself. Yeah. So if you have a neighborhood where the capacity is deemed low, you, you need to consider that when you're structuring it. And the, the current tariff structure addresses that, which is why even between commercial and residential, okay, that's the point. rates are different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, so anything that, that is like tariff or, or tax must take into consideration Your those little e e e exactly. Yeah. But you see, where my problem is with this is the fact that we don't have enough of this power. That's where I wanted to come. So in. there's a limit to how many more Magodo models you can they plan. can create. Yeah, this is why I wanted I to say in this boom period. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just very quickly to say uh, because I, I spoke to a power expert, so to speak. And he said, look, they can only do this for so long because the, all they're doing is diverting electricity to the people yeah. who are ready to pay for it. Yeah. So if they do it and they have the sense to then take the gains and begin to plow it into you know, developing greater capacity. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what we actually were told was that it's not even that we don't generate enough power distribution. is distribution it's okay. the infrastructure that we have yeah. so like for instance this model that happened in magodo has now been implemented in my estate and oh my god it's like a shock to the system mm. it's pretty much 24 hour light, light. no tell generator you, no sound. gen no nothing to the point that our fridges are freezing everything now start turning Putting things it down. off yeah. now okay. uh, that's next level <laughs> that's really next, you know to <laughs> the next point that i don't even know what to do with myself i'm just seeing like you know left right and center but um it's the infrastructure because before they implemented it they had to take down wires they had to put new poles they had to do and that was the reason and even with that we still have a few it, it might go down for a minute then it'll come back up mm. so um i was shocked to even discover that we even produced Produced that much electricity. I always thought it was from the production okay. that it started, but it's actually through the, the distribution, distribution that the problem is. But either way, you still have to remedy it. Yes, the, the transmission, sorry. Yeah. Then the other thing is what I also, because I had a chat with like um, a, 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 a driver, um, and he was saying to me, funnily enough, he lives in a part of Yaba, and funnily enough, they do get light at specific times. So they actually know when load, they're going to have light. Shedding. Yes, and when they're not going to have light. So they're able to actually work mm -hmm. according mm -hmm. to that. Um, you mentioned the one about oh, the Robin Hood factor. Yeah. I think, to be honest, metering 
has covered that because once you no. put the meter there, yeah. like on my neighbor next door, with this extra light, they have finished their, <laughs> their yeah, units. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so they're just chilling in the darkness for now. <laughs> and you know, every now and again, they put the gen on because that's what they can afford. You know, the, so you, so you have to. Meet you, work, you only pay for what you can Yeah, you only yeah, pay for, for what, what you can, consume. what yeah. you consume, exactly. So you I don't really think you consume. need to do no, but then a that's level. Where, you know, because I think it, then there's still an unfair advantage. No, but no. Like, to but those who can afford see, more. But I'll talk about commercial yes, and, and residential. residential. Yeah. Yeah. For the residential, for example, in um, let's say Ajegule, 47 naira per kilowatt. Mm. And then you, if you know that you bought 1,000 naira worth of electricity, mm. you cannot afford to sit down in the sitting room and be running the air conditioning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like we do. Yeah. Yeah. Even anyway, we don't never run will give me like an estimated bill. Yeah. Mm. But if you know that it is running, the bills are running, you'll stop. You'll stop. Yeah. Mm. You can even switch it off from the changeover oh, okay. and just chill out in the darkness. Yeah, for yeah, but, yeah. But, you know, but you know, you're all talking about Lagos. There are places in Nigeria with absolutely no electricity. Yeah, no connection. Yeah, to yeah the no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. 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 So this is where I'm hoping but that the gains will be. Another, uh, for, unfortunately, is the fact that we always have this when the waters in the dam are up. Because the hydro now generates more. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have a generation transmission uh, issue. Yeah, but my, my stress anyway on this case <laughs> is that this is the time to intervene because normally we act as if we're people caught on a back foot. We know now that people are taking advantage yeah. of this new system. Money is being made. Let's keep them on there, you know, make them accountable True. to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. An abuse system is nurtured because of the absence of checks and balances. After the break, Bolaho brings some balance to the topic of, you guessed it, rice. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be he's unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was a terrible, very, <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. There's a reason why it is said that there are two sides to every coin. This rice thing. Rice, the third most consumed staple food in Nigeria, has dominated public discourse more heatedly in the last few months. There are several opinions about the subject depending on who is talking about it and from which perspective. But can we look at some untainted facts about the subject? When CBN says rice import has crashed by over 90%, is this true? The answer is yes and no. It is true that demand from the official window for importation has fizzled out. But in 2018, Nigeria still imported about 3 million metric tons of rice via the port and informal channels. Is Nigeria self-sufficient in rice production? No. According to a KPMG report that looked at this subject over a decade, Nigeria produced only 55% of what it consumed in 2018. That left a gap of 45%. So when you see the border closed and prices go up, you know it is basic economics of same money chasing fewer goods. Prices automatically go up. As Nigeria made significant stride in rice production, the answer is yes. Production has literally doubled over the last decade. Other facts include Nigeria is the largest producer in sub-Saharan Africa, second in Africa, next only to Egypt. Nigeria has a problem with yield per hectare. While yield in China is 6.9 metric tons per hectare, 8.2 in Egypt, it's a paltry 1.8 metric ton in Nigeria. I want to advocate that government gets more honest in its relation with the people on the rice initiative. Don't say we have stopped importing when we imported 3 million tons. Don't say we are self-sufficient when we only produce 55% of what we consume. Share the vision with us more clearly and list our support to make it work. Today, if we double our yield from 1.8 to 3.6 metric tons, the number flipped. 
55% production becomes 110%. And who says we cannot become a net exporter of rice? At 3.6, we are still far from China's yield of 6.9 or Egypt's 8.2. Let us invest in research and technology. Or maybe simply copy the successful technology-driven farming practices in Egypt or China to drive our rice initiative to its destination. Yeah. I mean, message. I think you two are definitely rice are on exactly yes. the same page, and I'm joining you on that page. We'll send as well. this message to mm. Buhari in London. <laughs> to Buhari in London. No, but my, my, my only query with that is, you know, when you say share the vision, do they even have a vision in the first place? That's why I said. So. I think there's that's a little, said, the close border. Border. Even, even vision. Even close border is, is confused. Why are you closing border? To, to, oh, it's because it's of a, the that, that was a oh, knee jerk reaction. Apparently, it was a knee jerk reaction. I believe people have been giving the president the wrong impression about how successful this program has been. If you talk to the president, if you talk to the president, quote me anywhere, he will tell you this was how we did it in 1984. Oh dear. And so that's why we Let's go back it to it now. Mm. 1984 to this time is how many years? Uh, yeah. You brought it back because you said it was who, successful who, who in 1984. Yes. And so that is why he wants to take us back to back 1984. To it. And, and, and so the question I keep asking is, one, if tomorrow you decide to open your border and you are sufficient, you want to export to these neighboring African countries, they what if they it. also close their, their border? border? Exactly. Uh, we well, they're see. beginning to reject some of our yes, yes. businesses. They've started, you know? yeah. Um, but I don't even think you need to share anything overtly. If you're doing something that sh shows some systematic thought, people will get behind you. No, you know, so you don't even need to come out I, and say, I agree that get on But you see, how do people get share. behind no, you? No, it's good to share because I think Nigerians as a whole, we become so suspicious yeah, of our very, government. Exactly. We're suspicious of absolutely everything they do. Somebody, I was watching um, a program last night and, and the person said, why is it that everything the government does, even when it's good, people say this and they say, because we are suspicious. Yeah. But we don't we know when you don't more know. more information. It's the same thing with this um, operation, Positive ID. Yes. You are telling us all manner of different things. Meanwhile, we believe that you have a different agenda. Well, the way it was rolled out. <laughs> yeah. It's a it trust was problem. News and then it was if, being rolled yes. out. If an agency of government will more or less communicate that we, have, we are self-sufficient in rice, for example, but we're not self-sufficient. So like, if we are self-sufficient, why do you need to close border? Exactly. You know. To, you know and, and then, uh, sorry, quickly, uh, you see this issue. I remember the cocoa. Do you know that if you go to Yanomon, rubber, rubber research in Edo State, mm. built as far back as the early 60s, you know, fantastic, you know, opportunities to research in, you know, rubber, mm -hmm. but we have abandoned it. Mm -hmm. Cocoa research Crane. in um, Ibadan. A, Ibadan, you have cocoa research also in Afuze, but now they've been abandoned. Mm. And so we're talking about rice, rice, rice today. I cannot point to any institution where the government is empowering research in rice, but apart from dumping money mm. on yeah, rice, farmers, rice farmers, don't to talk of the $23 billion given to them last year mm. for uh, given to rice farmers because of flooding. Mm. You, you know, so when you pour money at these problems without actually looking at, you know, how do I improve targeted, correct, intervention. targeted intervention, it becomes a problem. Yeah. And, and so you get the same result. And then I asked the question just now, I said, are we doing those things that China did? Mm. Exactly. If you don't do those things, you won't get the result. Even if you open your borders, you're not going to have change. Why is it so cheap to import from Benin Republic and not Nigeria? Mm. Is it not that because you have too many agencies at the port? Exactly. Or that you know you you import a car from here, they charge you three million mm -hmm. duties and they give you receipt of two million. You drive the car outside, the customer will arrest you mm. for. Or on that on that value, yeah, value. Mm. and yet you were not the one that valued the value. Mm -hmm. You paid what you were you told were given, to pay. Told to pay, and then you are asked to go and pay. You, you know, it's all of this confusion, and when there is no systemic approach to it, and then people really don't understand. So what you need to Mm -hmm. Closing borders does not remedy these things. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Then, How can you solve a problem that requires science and technology see, with closing borders? See, you have you have then more you trucks. You don't even close all the more borders. trucks on the Nigerian Time. side of the border no, that are that. supplying goods. Mm. That are supplying yeah, goods to the West African subregion, Cadbury, mm -hmm. even slippers mm. to to Ivory Coast. You have a lot of them stuck in the border there, mm. and then. Here, our ports, the, the CG of customs says our scanners are broken down last year. How many scanners do we have? You get to our local airport, they still use manual mm. to search bags. 
how are you going to achieve effectiveness <laughs> exactly. with that kind of But let me even take up from your statement that oh, government should be more honest with us. Yeah. I think Correct. Nigerians have a, a great capacity for getting, when you give them the real picture, they will adjust. You know, they will. Yeah. They so, will. That, so I just want to even make a direct appeal because while we're busy hunting for fake news propagators, mm. government should recognize that they are the ones leading the way mm -hmm. in this whole trend of giving fake news sure. or false information. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because if you come clean, that I, um, positive idea, I'm still unhappy about all the zigzagging Me on too. that. Because till now, we don't really know. Like, they haven't I mean, come out openly talks. and mm. said, we said, we, they're letting us fill in the gaps. They, 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 they even have made a mistake. You can say we made a mistake. Oh. We're not going further. Yeah. There's nothing mistakes. wrong about yeah. Yeah. Uh, Exactly. They will never <laughs> admit to making no, Because I want to believe in the border closure. I want to believe that we actually, like, it's, it's positive news to hear that we've doubled our rice production. Over the last so, 10 years, yes, we have. So, you know, we will get behind that if we feel that that's the way to go, if that's your agenda, we'll get behind it. But not when you're being dishonest about But the major where problem, we're they're now saying that not just that they closed the borders because of rice, they closed the borders because apparently Terrorism. the bandits have in infiltrated the south. Now, the border then you should be closing should be the northern border okay. because that's where they're all coming in from. But you're not closing that. So again, that raises... Okay, they're not closing the No, they haven't closed the northern borders. Without, Everybody even, has even reported that it's still very much all the open. formal borders so, what is your agenda? Informal ones. The informal ones are over a thousand. Yes. Mm -hmm. Without wanting to sound them, uh, without wanting to take over the program, let me tell you also, <laughs> no, please, in the north, the, the, the cows mm. that we consume here, a lot of them come from Niger, yes. you know, through informal borders. No tariffs are paid, right, no right. duties, you know, these are a livestock. But you pay ta tariffs and duties for Turkey and mm. then in Cotonou Chicken. and the rest. And then also, you're talking about, um, uh, you said about, you talked about uh, um, Hon being honest with us. Be being honest with, with Nigerians. Mm. And the, the government will tell you, we close border not just because of rice, but the discourse, the discourse, 80% 80, 80 of the discussion is about rice. Mm. Yeah. And less about, you the know, the other things. Yes. And, you know, things as like, serious as terrorism. Yes, and, so, and, but yeah. I, the reason I'm struggling to, because uh, you mentioned this point again, it sounds like a rice conspiracy. Why? I still don't get it. Why are we, why? Nobody we, has really explained see, why rice. We conspire about literally everything. everything. Yeah. We just, we just, you just, you just spoke what, about positive what, ID. Where, where, where is the dominant is. production of rice in Nigeria? Northwest. That's the reason why. Okay. Because your president is from the north. Oh, like no, you've gone so, back to the tribal so, argument. No, 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 no. I think let's not dodge. <laughs> oh, you know, boy. I like the comment somebody made on YouTube that we don't talk from ethnic, religious mm. bias. But I've been waiting because this has okay. to be said. Okay. Rice is because the president is from the north. That's and all. And we so he's pushing all. an agenda that I think is selfish. But ultimately, if it works, yeah, we will all gain. All but I know that that's why he's pushing you know, rice. Okay. Okay. Because the rest of you have been pushing oil. Why we don't? our rice production was because of processing before we had rice that had stones mm. so when we started processing okay, and destoning yes. you know a lot of people started yeah. processing so, so, so the government yeah. should get so behind the stoning machines okay uh, well our time is up <laughs> Gosh, rice. some will say we have cleaned up and even lit the plate <laughs> others will say there is more where that came from so keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook plus TV Africa Hashtag the advocate ng or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa hashtag the advocate ng. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. Bye. Welcome to the advocate a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you yeah. can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very terrible, like <laughs> terrible strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news.